Moscow calls on the Syrian government and the opposition to form special working teams to deal with all issues, not with a single specific question. Two citizens were injured when a mortar shell fired by terrorists fell on Al Amara residential neighborhood in Damascus. Two airplanes of assistance from Russia arrive at Al Basel Airport in Latakia, loaded with 52 tons of various kinds of humanitarian aid. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Yerado Krikorian with the news in English. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has voiced his country's call on the USA and other countries that influenced the situation in Syria to contact all sides in that country except the terrorists. During a session of talks he held in Moscow today with a delegation of the so-called Opposition Coalition Delegation, Lavrov said... I urge our American and European partners and the countries of the region, which, in our conviction, should work with all sides without exception. I mean here the political sides, not the terrorists, Lavrov added. Lavrov said his meeting today with the coalition delegation would be useful to determine stands in order to later push forward the Geneva process. Lavrov had reiterated in his word at the security conference held in Munich three days ago the call for unifying international efforts to solve the crisis in Syria. He affirmed his country's effective support for the dialogue that was started in Geneva between the Syrian government and the opposition, voicing belief that the opposition should be represented on a large scale in the upcoming round of talks as a precondition to guarantee the success of the conference. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Gennady Gatilov has said his country has suggested the formation of a teamwork from the Syrian government and the opposition to deal with main topics within the framework of the Geneva talks. Gatilov underlined the need to reach an agreement on a number of questions such as a ceasefire, the humanitarian issues and the subject of forming a transitional administrative commission in order to find a solution to the crisis in Syria. Gatilov said... Solving all these issues requires the formation of special working teams. The Russian Deputy Foreign Minister said each issue raised within the framework of the Geneva talks requires exerting concentrated efforts underlining the need that focus should not be made on a single issue to the exclusion of the others. He added that Moscow believes that it should move forward on several tracks at the same time. Russian eight plane reached Al Basel Airport in Latakia. The eight plane is loaded with 52 tons of relief materials provided by Russia to help the Syrian people face the unjust economic sanctions and the repercussions of the terrorist attacks. This batch of assistance includes food material, children's milk, and other requirements for the winter. Since the beginning of the crisis in Syria, the Russian people and government provided several batches of humanitarian aid and relief. The last batch arrived at Al Basel Airport in Latakia last month, bought two Russian planes carrying 44 tons of aid to the Syrian people. Emphasizing to press on with the national dialogue away from the Western dictates and foreign interference, parties and forces of national bloc have held a press conference at Damaros Hotel in Damascus to underscore the fact that adopting Doha coalition as the sole side to hold talks with the delegation of the Syrian government and the sole representative of the opposition was the main reason behind the results reached at Geneva conference because this coalition has no representation on the ground. The participants further confirmed that a basic condition to make Geneva conference a success 
was to immediately halt funding and arming overtly or covertly the armed groups. They pointed out that the U.S. conduct in this respect to solve the crisis in Syria lacks seriousness. They concluded by saying that Geneva Conference could realize a genuine solution to the crisis in Syria only if it has managed to combat terrorism, stop foreign interference, and to launch a political process while maintaining Syria's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Two citizens, a young man and a girl, were injured today when a mortar shell fired by terrorists fell on a house in King Faisal Street in Al Amara residential neighborhood in Damascus. Huge material damage was inflicted on the house. In Aleppo, Governorate, Syrian Arab army units have eliminated a number of terrorists and destroyed their weapons and ammunition in Qadi Askar, Karm Yassar, and Karm al Jazmati in the city of Aleppo. Other Syrian Arab army units killed and wounded scores of armed men in the neighborhoods of Al Jandul, Hanano, Al Marje, Dawar Jawuz, and Karm al Daman in Aleppo. The Syrian Arab army also eliminated armed terrorist groups in the towns and villages of Al Jdeide, Quares, Arbid and the surroundings of Aleppo Central Prison. The Syrian Arab Army also destroyed terrorist vehicles loaded with arms and ammunition in Azan and the industrial town. On the other hand, a child and a woman were killed and seven other citizens were wounded when a mortar shell fired by terrorists fell in Al Midan neighborhood in the city of Aleppo. In the resort, Syrian Arab army units destroyed today five vehicles loaded with weapons and ammunition which were intended to reach terrorists. Other Syrian Arab army units destroyed a tunnel that was used by the terrorists in their movement, killing many of them and injuring several others. A military source said that in a Sina neighborhood, a unit of the Syrian Arab army destroyed a vehicle equipped with an anti-aircraft machine gun, killing a number of terrorists. The source added that four terrorists were killed near the old bus garage, while four of terrorist vehicles were destroyed at Ghassan Abud roundabout. A 29 meters long tunnel that was used by the terrorists in a Jbeli neighborhood was also destroyed. Other Syrian Arab army units clashed with armed terrorist groups in the airport neighborhood, killing dozens of terrorists. The Syrian Arab army has eliminated terrorists who infiltrated from Al Warsha quarter to Al Wadi street in Bab Siba neighborhood in the city of Homs, destroying their weapons and ammunition. Syrian Arab army units also killed a large number of terrorists in Al Qarabis neighborhood and the villages of Al Dar al Kabira, Al Khalidiyah, and Al Ghasibiya, including a leader of a terrorist group, Ghazi Dukhan. In Jurat al Shayyah neighborhood, a number of terrorists have meanwhile turned themselves in to a Syrian military unit. Welcome back. In Iraq, four people were killed and 18 others injured in two terrorist attacks around Baghdad. The first attack was carried out by a car bomb targeting a Shurta neighborhood southwest of Baghdad, killing three people and injuring 15 others. The second blast was by a roadside bomb planted on a road in a Taji district north of Baghdad. The attack targeted a police patrol, killing a police officer and injuring three others. Finally, six military men were killed by an explosive device that was planted inside their vehicle. A security source said that the explosive device was planted in the vehicle that exploded as it was passing in Al Khamsin Street near Dar Silm area north of the capital on its way to the headquarters of the Minister of Defense, downtown Sana'a, pointing out that the number of those killed was likely to rise. The sources indicated that the blast was most likely perpetrated by Al-Qaeda. It is to be noted that the blast followed three blasts that hit Sana'a yesterday. The first took place near the French Embassy, the second near Minister of Defense, and the third near the Central Bank. With this, to end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Nariman Kassam, but after a short break.